Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 here today on the channel. We're back on the Millennium Dawn Modern Day mod. We're going to be playing as the United States here today. So, if you'd like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. So, think of this as a, a little bit late 4th of July uh, gift for you Americans, <laughs> I suppose. Alright, we're going to be going for the 2000 scenario starting January 1st. We're playing as the States, we're playing as America, we're playing as uh, Bill Clinton. Alright, so regular's fine, uh, historical AI focuses as well. I could edit this and make the pro-NATO countries, well, more pro-NATO, and the others not so much, but look, you know what, I think we'll just leave it like that and just get stuck head on in to a United States campaign. It's been a while since I've played the modern day mod. Haven't really played too much of the new update as well. It's probably been two years since I've played this, but I'm incredibly excited and keen to learn how the uh, massive new update goes. So, Hearts of Iron 4 connoisseurs, let me know feedback and suggestions and tips and tricks for the uh, modern day mod. I would really appreciate it. Alright, first things first. We're currently pro-Western outlook. Parties-wise, I don't think it overly matters. Um, Democratic, Republican, I don't really mind. Whoever's ruling, whatever. I basically want to be pro-Western, pro-NATO, pro-interventionalism, pro-American empire in this campaign. So as long as the two parties serve that purpose, it doesn't really... Uh, matter who's in charge okay so christian is our national religion there's not like an atheism here or something like it'd be kind of cool if you got like scientific bonuses um if there was an atheist selection all right stagnation we need to go with stable growth because we're currently in a huge amount of debt which we need to fix we can get that by getting more office sectors and civilian industry as well but hell with the United States we could always just print money if we want so we want to try and go to stable growth we want to reduce corruption as well definitely going to go down to modest corruption national statistics in international in internal factions rather um, Wall Street the military industrial complex and the CIA that's uh, hilarious all right so, we're currently mostly decentralized at the moment, rather than a centralized bureaucratic state. For the individual, decentralization is great, but as we are playing as the state, and we want to go around conquering factions, I think we want to try and increase centralization. Our military spending is quite small, we would rather increase that. Our police funding as well, uh, it just costs too much, so we might drop to a minimal, because we need to reduce our debt. Uh, we might even... I think we'll just leave it at higher education focus for now. Free emergency treatment. I think we want to go to basic subsidies. And we might even drop the welfare as well to just a basic pension. Consumption economy. We, want, we do want to switch it to semi-consumption economy. That's going to get us a lot more money. Volunteer force wise. We've got 1.1 million manpower. We're going away from the ages of mass assault doctrines. Uh, we're mostly going to be focusing on our air force capabilities, small specialized forces um, in individual units and, and tanks and stuff. So look, we probably don't really need to install a draft. Global interventionalism. Cool. That's exactly what we want. Uh, Neo-imperialism is good if you want to play as a like if you want to play a united states campaign and you just want to start war decking countries left right and center canada mexico you can go down and i would recommend neo-imperialism however you do have to change the ruling party to autocratic everything's fine here oh let's have a look at the uh defense companies can we have we got lockheed martin here and raytheon <laughs> yeah we got fucking raytheon oh god it's pretty crazy that me as an Australian, I can invest in these companies if I wanted to. Yeah, so I guess we go with Lockheed Martin and we go with uh, Raytheon as well. I think that would be quite fitting. National focus wise, let's just have, have a quick look. So, okay. 
So we can go further into the east. Uh, we can expand NATO. It's probably not a bad idea to do that. But we also have to get the American economy going. We've got the Patriot Act, which we need to go down to. Because we will have some wars soon. Because it is 2000 after all. American political system. The American economy as well. Maybe we go with that. Try and get that back on track. I just want to have a quick look at our territories. We control some territory in Bahrain and Kuwait. Okay. <laughs> we can release Texas as a nation if we want. That's hilarious. Or Cali. Okay. So, let's have a look at some of our overseas military bases. We've got one here in Cuba. Obviously, Puerto Rico. We've got Hawaii. Um, yeah, so what have we got over here? Okay. So, we do have some military bases here. We might look to expand the Air Force capacity here as well. And maybe get some missile silos. Because war is going to break out over here at some point in the future. Political decisions wise, there's nothing really we can do overly too much just yet. We currently want to increase our House and Senate support. So maybe going with a medium lobbying effort. We can leave NATO if we want. We might even move the uh, embassy and we might even recognize Taiwan as well. That might be a good idea. Intelligence agency wise, yeah, I suppose we create the CIA. Research-wise, we've got a bunch of slots here. Okay, we currently produce the M16A4. And we eventually want to get the M4A1. Dude, that holographic site looks sick. So infantry, vehicles, like the Bradley. Got some artillery here as well. Got javelins, that's sick. Navy, helicopters. We've got some raptors, falcons. We've got some harriers as well, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, I think we go down electronics and industry firstly if we can. So let's go with 3G. Let's go with construction 1. Let's go with nanofibers and 3D printers to increase our production efficiency. We can even increase the monthly population by getting modern GMO foods. We can um, expand our fuel processing capacity in the states but to be fair we've already got a bunch of fuel in the states and we're eventually going to be well invading countries that like i think this area here has like 40 percent of the world's oil so we're going to be able to take oil off other people so we probably don't really need to invest that much within our own uh country itself ah what's this oh production efficiency capital let's just do that but even over here we've got Space tech, we've got uh, intercontinental BMs. Oh my god, crazy stuff. I love this tech tree. Holy shit. Have we got some like hypersonic weaponry? Yeah, I would assume as much. Oh my god. Crazy. They've even got some warheads and stuff here as well. That's sick. Diplomacy-wise, there's probably not much else we can do. We can't really expand NATO just yet, but we can have a look at some of the members. So here are the NATO members. We've got the Axis of Resistance in the South, CSTO as well. All right, might just have a quick look at current wars-wise. All right, there's a Chechen war, Chechen war here. So we might start propping up some rebels, I think. So maybe we negotiate with them and... Let's try and send some military aid. Alright, let's send some M16s. Let's say 50 a month. And... I think they're going to fall. So, I don't want to send too much equipment. Just in case the Ruskies get a hold of it, essentially. I reckon these guys can probably last a little bit longer. So let's also give some... Let's give 100 a day. And we'll also give some monthly support equipment as well. But it would be atypical for United States logistics and equipment and lend lease to fall into enemy combatant hands, wouldn't it? <laughs> Recruitment and deployment wise, um, I'm assuming these infantry templates and divisions are okay. Um, I haven't actually looked at the sort of optimal meta for Millennium Dawn uh, single player units but I'm assuming that these are being created by the devs they're probably just stock standard and they're probably fine 
Like, these special forces groups are probably better than any other. Cool, there's a mountain division here. I think we uh, are definitely going to need them in the future at some point. Our logistics is actually fine. Officer cores, we can't allocate any of these just yet. We can have a quick look at some of the uh, land doctrine. Alright, so we've got the missile systems here as well. So I think we want to go with range. So let's get... Or maybe get the minimum at three. Because this is a whole system as well. Alright, so minimum three, yep. And then we can add a warhead to it as well. Because we can launch these um, from within our own territory and overseas as well if we want. Oh, bro, there's even like a missile defense system? That's crazy. I wonder if we can talk to Israel to get the schematics for the Iron Dome. <laughs> Get it in uh, the US or something. So I think we'll go with some cheaper interception missiles. Yeah, because we don't want to bankrupt ourselves. That's the problem. If they... Because I think, like... I think it's something crazy that, like, the interception missiles cost, like, 10 or 100 times whatever the rocket is that's coming on in. <laughs> it's, like, crazy expensive missile defense systems. So we'll just go with the low-grade rocket. In this game, in Hearts of Iron 4, it only really affects civilian in, um, infrastructure rather than, like, the populace. It does affect supply and stuff. Oh, God, we got the Space Center. Holy shit. This is awesome. I wish there was some, like, a little bit of an auto-manage for some of this stuff. Like, I'd nearly just give Elon Musk the whole operation of the Space Agency. Yeah, Elon, do whatever you want. I fucking trust you. Just get us to Mars. <laughs> Oh god, this is crazy. Oh, here's our nuclear policy as well. Do we have a strike first policy? I actually don't know. Or is it only retaliatory? Yeah, we do a first strike. Oh wow. It actually says in our military doctrine here. Alright, uh, let's get some uranium going, I suppose. And we'll get some warheads in reserve. No. Like, nukes are okay in Hearts of Iron 4, but you're nearly better off... Focusing on air force and like mobilize infantry and stuff because if you hit if you do Launch a nuclear warhead. It really only affects The supply of some units and the civilian like the infrastructure which sometimes if you're going to conquer a settlement You're gonna have to re a country you're gonna have to repair the settlements and the infrastructure anyway So you kind of don't want to nuke it. You kind of want to occupy it Eventually, so it can be a little bit counterintuitive, and it is quite expensive as well. Okay, construction-wise, office sectors are going to give us a lot of money, so I suppose we get some in. And then we eventually want to try and get some civilian industry as well. Now, we don't have any silos on the US mainland, I suppose. Oh, no, we do have a couple, actually. We probably don't need to have them here, though. Like... We're not going to fire into Canada. Oh, we could be firing into, like, cartel members in the south or something. It might be a better idea to build some silos eventually down here. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. Because we are going to be more than likely launching attacks into these countries. It also wouldn't be a bad idea either to expand the air force capabilities here. So we can have a thousand... Airplanes out of Kuwait, Kuwait and Yeah, there's only 400 in Bahrain, so we definitely would uh, like to increase that if we can Oh, this is already at max capacity Nice, I think that's all for our construction for now. It also might be a good idea to invest some infrastructure 
civilian infrastructure in some other countries as well. So maybe we try and invest in Japan. Okay, we can't do that just yet. Like, can we do it in my home country of Australia? In particularly my home state, Tasmania. Uh, no, we can't just yet until we reduce corruption. Um, oh, there's a Indonesian war going on over here. Hang on. Maybe I send some military aid to them as well. Because we do have a huge stockpile of it. So let's send 100 a month. Alright, just to help them out. Help out those proxy wars. Okay, military and dockyards wise. I've gone and set out all the equipment I want. So firstly, we want, we want to prioritize the M16s. Same with the support equipment, and then the rest will just go into other equipment. We've got some stingers here, we've got some javelins. Uh, we've also got a bunch of Harrier aircraft. We've even got some Grey Eagle drones, some bombers. Navy-wise, we want to focus on convoys. And we'll eventually make an east, a West Coast and East Coast Navy, and we'll send those ships directly to them. I think I want to focus on battleships at the high end, and then submarines at the low end. But we're going to struggle for resources <laughs> in this campaign until we start... Fixing our economy and conquering and taking territory. So I think going with submarines is probably not a bad idea. They probably have the biggest bang for your buck. We should also really focus on getting a fantastic air force because aerial supremacy in this game is king. It can really make or break a campaign. A military campaign, that is. Army-wise, we currently have 30 divisions, 399 battalions. 44 fleets in the Navy. And the Air Force is probably quite strong as well. Oh, hell yeah. Well, we can probably have them stationed in Kuwait, actually. Yeah, let's get them over there in operation. Because I eventually want them to be running these aerial missions uh, with their eyes closed. Aerially, how far can these guys reach? Oh, dude, some of them can actually reach over here. Because this is where the first initial conflict is going to break out. I would imagine. Because we're currently going through historical AI focuses. We want to try and roleplay where we can as well. I think we're ready to uh, unpause. I've decided to make an East Coast Navy here. All our military aid's been accepted. And a West Coast Navy as well. Um, hmm. I probably want to try and eventually go to war with Cuba. So I guess he stays. And then we'll make some army groups as well. I do want to try and send some of our military forces to the Far East. Southern Illinois incident. Ooh, spooky. We've got some UFOs, I guess. Um, maybe we found some craft. Uh, not of this world, I suppose. Oh, here we go. We've got the USS Cole incident. Yeah, we're definitely going to demand payment for the damages. The uh, Qatari government wants a bailout. Dude, I need a fucking bailout. <laughs> Sorry, we can't uh, afford this. And Brazil has launched an investment offer. Uh, sure, I suppose we'll accept. Curious just to have a look at uh, Brazil at the moment. Ah, mostly Western Outlook. Ah, uh, shame. Looks like the Ruskies won. Okay, looks like the uh, navies have merged up. So we've got 94 in here. Uh, let's just bring you in. And... Sure. Okay, I think we need an East Coast Navy more than anything else. I think the West Coast Navy here will move it all the way to Kuwait, I think. And we'll get it to... Basically, live and be docked there. Because we want to have naval supremacy in the Persian Gulf. We're also setting up an army as well. So, let's just bring these guys in. Uh, whatever. And we eventually want to send a small contingent. Eastward as well. Now, we're going to be a little bit careful because... Supply lines and logistics in the modern day mod can be a little bit iffy, so we don't want to send too many military forces over there, but we also don't really want to lose this territory if we can really avoid it. 
Um, do we have that many sort of divisions around? So, mostly in the contiguous. <laughs> We've got one infantry division on the DMZ. Hilarious. Where's this? Oh, that's right in the uh, center of the US. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> We've got one, just one infantry uh, brigade in Germany, just to keep an eye on the uh, the Germans. Yeah, because we've got like all these overseas bases. Do the Russians have this one here? In Tartus? No, not at this point, but they eventually will have one here. Hey, he actually paid the damages. 250 million as well. The CIA has been created. Hilarious. We can't get any agents just yet. We've completed the national focus, the American economy. Nice. I think we might go down with some political reform, matter of fact. Still got more unassigned divisions. Oh, nice. We can expand the American economy, which is probably what we want to do. Uh, quickly just looking at the trade. So, technology metals is what we really need to focus on. So let's do that then. Actually, you know what? We might be better off. Uh, we actually don't have the support. We have 47 out of the 49 senators. So we can't even go down revitalize industry or regulated markets. So we might need to get old Bill Clinton a little bit more popular. Yeah, because we're already going with that um, medium lobbying effort. Okay. We'll just wait for that to go through. But we're currently slowly but surely making plans and preparations before we can launch uh, Operation Freedom, I guess. Liberia wants a bailout. No, sorry, I can't afford it. So we've got an 18 unit force and then we've got a 10. So I think we send the 10 all the way to the east. It's probably not a bad idea. Let's do that then. Okay, so we can add some military high command. Oh, jeez. Who the hell do we want here? Maybe army command, firstly. I think recovery rate is really important rather than organization. Yeah. Let's go with this. We also can get an operative. Oh, my God. <laughs> Natasha Romanov. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. James Edward. <laughs> Kevin Brown. Let's uh, get uh, James Edward in, I suppose. Microsoft acquires Visto. Stronger corporations means more taxable revenue. This is a hostile takeover. Prevent it. No, we don't want to let the commies uh, gain some influence. All right, there's been an incident. What do I want to do here? Ugh. We're already struggling with senators. I guess we could launch an investigation. 44. Now that this is complete, what will it shoot to? 49. Hang on. I'll quickly pause, because that might be enough. Oh, we might... Shit. I need to go down this, though, if we can. Wait. Why can't I do this? Oh, we've got a weakened economy, maybe? Because we have the senators and the representatives. North American Blizzard. Oh, dude, and a tornado as well. We don't have the money. Which is really quite unfortunate. We need 25 billion. We don't have it. Fuck. Oh, it looks like our military forces arrived here. It's probably not a bad idea to move our embassy and also recognize Taiwan. Like at this point, China's not going to be a threat. We have naval supremacy. As long as we've got a better quality navy, navy by them, by 2030, we'll be fine.
Okay, we have enough political power to go to stable growth now. So it's only 3.9 we're losing. We can up the tax rate for the corporate and population, but it will slow down our construction efficiency. So we're better off actually going down with uh, minusing our corruption. Prioritizing that. I think we reaffirm NATO. It's the 24th of May 2000, and the election is in November at the end of the year. Uh, Indonesia won their war. Nice. France has an investment offer. Let's accept that. Let's build a French factory in Maryland. Data point files chapter 11 for bankruptcy. We could bail them out. We have the money. It will also strengthen our opinion with Wall Street. But we do get a... Oh, that's 150 political power. That's actually huge. I'm nearly tempted to do that. Because then we're going to be able to switch things over to modest corruption. And we're better reaffirm NATO as well. Which will give us an additional 100. Because I do still want to... Drop down some of these governmental expenditures. Right, reaffirm NATO has been complete. Politically, I think we'll go down the big two. And then go with a balanced approach for both parties. Alright, unfortunately Spain and Israel aren't paying us for some reason. So we're going to have to cancel our production lines that are currently present uh, in their countries. Okay. Yeah, we definitely need more Senate and House support. So we'll try and increase those measures. We might even pay the farm subsidy as well. It will cost us more money, but it'll get us more senators on our side because we've got an upcoming election soon. All right, let's increase our production efficiency and let's get some early 2000 uh, 3D printers. Dude, we can even get CRISPR as well. <laughs> Some gene uh, tech, which is quite cool. So that's what we're going for at the moment. Just increasing our industry. Alright, we're currently minus 2.8 billion. So we might reduce the budget. Once we start occupying and conquering countries, we are going to be able to get our budget back in balance. 844 billion we're currently in debt so we really need to try and reduce that as best we can before it goes too crazy i want to get to a good position before the financial crash in 2008 all right we might as well go with the u.s army because in a couple years we will be at war hey here we go election campaign heating up let's go Will Bill Clinton win? Or will the Republican Party take over? Oh, they actually got a headway over the Democrats. The Republicans are 43%. We might be able to push some stuff through. All right, hang on. We can invite a controversial speaker. Okay, so this is like a a, a check, which is interesting. So we might actually be, get, be able to gain that percentile back. Oh, and it gave us a much-needed boost. Nice, so we're a little bit more competitive than uh, what we were. Oh, so unfortunately it was inconclusive. Damn. Alright, so we have enough Senate and House support now to... I think it's probably not a bad idea to invest in the American economy. Alright, so we need to form a new government. Oh, so that's interesting. So you can actually invite the constitutionalists or the progressives if you wanted to form a government. I think we'll just try and wait to see what happens. We do lose 300 political power, which is quite a bit, but sometimes you can take the hit and not form the government completely. It's like ruling in a majority or a minority. I suppose. I also eventually want to grant Guam and Puerto Rico statehood as well. 
But it's interesting that to push through economic reforms, we do actually need to... We have a House and Senate support. Alright, so here in that tab, we can basically ban political parties if we want. So there's no one we can really draw with, because we haven't got non-aligned or a large progressive or constitutional base. So like, if we flipped it over to the Republican Party, they would have to form a coalition. Um, so I guess we'll try and save up the political power and take the hit. Oh no, Bill Clinton's been overthrown. How's that? <laughs> oh, Gore is currently the president now. Oh, okay. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so Bill Clinton in the 2000 election got thrown out. Okay. Interesting. Nice. We've got some land doctrines here that we can assign. Naval and air as well. In the future at some point. I think we'll upgrade the economy to semi-consumption. We eventually want to go down globalized trade. Once we've got an abundance of resources, this is where we're going to be able to make so much money. While trying to get the debt down. Yeah, I want to try and get it down before the financial crash. So we're making $7 billion a day now. Okay, we've unlocked some of these points. We can improve our Air Force doctrine. Oh god, the housing bubble. Gotta watch out for that. Nice, we can upgrade to fast growth now. We actually eventually want to get to economic boom. You gotta be really quite careful with your political power in this. Because due to events, you can uh, lose a lot. Alright, let's uh, continue to improve the American economy. Nice, we're doing quite well. We got an investment offer from Japan. Uh, Switzerland joins the UN. Nice! That's pretty big. That's pretty huge. Alright, so we've can we've created some jobs on the West Coast. We probably eventually want to strengthen the Federal Reserve. Maybe get some jobs on the East Coast as well. Along with other industry throughout the US. No, oh, here we go. Things have just been kicked off. Well... Looks like we're going to be going to war soon. Oh, nice. So we can actually do a bunch of demands here as well once we get the political power. I think we'll stand united politically. It'll give us a decent stability because we need to have the country stable. And we also need to get the war support going as well. It's a lot of political power, but no, yeah, I think this is an important service to attend. Alright, let's save up some of the political power. And we'll try and do these demands. <laughs> Al Gore's speech. <laughs> oh... Just as we shall bring, and it shall be swift. Al Gore. Oh, God. <laughs> Al Gore's war on WT. Oh, that's funny. Well, let's try and um, demand his extradition, I suppose. And we'll see what they say. And, of course, they refused. Alright, so, looks like we're going to have our first war in the East. Before we move on to executing Operation Freedom. So it's currently the 5th of June 2001. And things are heating up in the world I suppose. Alright, so we've announced the plan. We can establish the Homeland Security... We need to set up a new administration in the East. We can partition the UN for the invasion. Yeah, like they're going to accept that. And establish a center in Cuba.
All right, so we haven't got any of the political power for this, so we need the Patriarch done, and we also essentially need to send volunteers to our allies in the north. So we'll send an interventional, um, an intervention force. Who can we send? The problem is fuel's probably going to be a problem up here. So maybe we send our best and brightest first special forces group and see how they do. Because they're operating in quite mountainous terrain. So we'll just chuck a general in, Richard Clark, sure, and we'll send that in. Damn, I wish we could send more military forces. But they're only just holding in the north here. Alright. So it's going to take a little bit before they arrive. And I wonder... Okay, so it looks like the British, the Germans, the Belgians, even the Iranians might help. I think we'll send some support equipment. Just to help on out. Oh god, they are not looking good here. Okay, so they've accepted the land lease. Um, I can embargo these guys, so that's probably not a bad idea. And we can't war deck them straight up, so we're going to have to... Essentially prop up these rebels and see if we can help. All right, let's unpause, wait for our special forces to be dropped in. Um, yeah, we want to go down with this now. We want to enact this. Nice. So they've uh, arrived in the Northern Alliance. Oh, God. That's another huge event. Oh, wow. There's a civil war here. Against the non-aligned. And, yeah, of course, him. <laughs> Alright. I wonder if Turkey's going to get involved there. Alright, so... Oh, they seem to be pretty outnumbered here. But we've got our first war of the series. Trying to help out our... Northern Alliance boys. Yes, yeah, so it looks like the UK is getting involved. Typical. I'd imagine some Australian forces will come over here soon. Alright. So, we'll try and get a breakthrough. Man, Japan is really trying to influence the United States economy. I'm going to be accepting them so much. Yeah, so I think we'll just we'll try and get a breakaway and we'll try and swing around and surround them in Kabul. That would probably be the play. Yeah, I think fuel, getting fuel in here would be the problem. So, we'll operate with that special forces, especially in this mountainous region as well. We're probably better having small, lighter, tactical groups. I hope that more NATO members get involved to help out and send reinforcements. Alright, so we've got some French here as well. Oh, dude, there's a bunch. Got some Italians, some Poles. Hell yeah. We've got a really nice, strong coalition. Forming nice, so this is what we want. So if we can make a front line here or something, and let's go with an offensive line to Kandahar. Yeah, so let's swing around that way, and we should be able to surround them. We kind of just need to guide the Northern Alliance AI as best as we can. Because if we can open up a nice path, let's go with economic boom as well. We're gonna be we're gonna be absolutely making money. Yeah, we should be able to surround them. Still gonna be a close war here, but it's interesting that we're not actually actively in this. We're sending volunteers, so that's probably what's gonna happen the majority in the campaign. Nice, we're making a decent amount of money, so we can pay off some of this eight hundred billion debt. 
which has accumulated quite a bit. But so far, we've made a two tile progression. But things are really kicking off here in the east. We've lost 1k, they've lost 2. Yeah, you can't track our volunteer forces though. Alright. Oh, they're actually pushing in the south big time. Yeah, we can't give them air support, that's the problem. Alright, so it looks like that special forces pincer is working. But they're really flanked around and capitulated from the side. Oh no, we've got them now. It's a GG. It's going to be a massive encirclement now. So I suppose you could... If you lose this war, you can't really do... Operation Freedom. It might like brick your game. An investment offer from the French. Let's accept that. Nice. The Aussies are pushing into Kabul, along with the Italians. They don't seem to be in NATO for whatever reason. Yeah, I think I remember reading that for whatever reason, the modern day mod, the Italians ten tend to always leave NATO. Nice, the Northern Alliance took five states. They seized 168 equipment. And now there's a new regime in charge. Nice. Currently not aligned. If we can get it on a Western outlook, that would be ideal, rather than emerging. If we can move this country away from the CSTO Ruski sphere of influence, that would be great. And we also might try and get House and Senate support to increase the American uh, economy. Nice. Al Gore has had his <laughs> first successful operation, I suppose. Alright, so we need to install a new government. Oh god, this is controversial. This is not going to bite us in the ass, whatever we do. Yeah, I guess we go... We, we fought for it, so I guess we go with pro-Western, but... Obviously, historically, that didn't work out quite well. <laughs> Alright, but now they're mostly Western Outlook, so maybe we just need to continually support them. Uh, let's... Yeah, let's... Oh, maybe we need a... Maybe we need a build... Yeah, let's properly create Homeland. And, like, bring in the TSA or whatever. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So we ended up winning over here. That's not good for me. Alright, so we're still a little bit away before the 2004 expansion of NATO. I wonder if you actually meant to hit it on these year dates, or can you just do them whenever you want? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we try and reassure Japan. They've been building a lot of investment in our territory, so we've probably got pretty good relations with them. Alright, let's... uh partition the UN and we're probably about to kick things off with Operation Freedom. We do have some small military forces down in the south and the navy. But we'll see what they have to say. There's no way we can partition the UN. They're probably more than likely going to decline it and make it a legal war. Yeah, so they declined it. I guess we're going to go for it. Well, yeah, we want to continue on. <laughs> we want to go for the invasion anyway, regardless of what they say. Alright, so let's drop an embargo. So it's the 12th of November, 2001. Oh, we probably need to run war support. And we're currently reassuring Japan. Still going to be a couple hundred days before this stuff is even complete. Oh, yes, the case between the US and Microsoft. I suppose we go with not guilty to strengthen Wall Street's opinion. All right. Well, we're two days away from probably getting the war deck on them. We've got our air force operating over the top. 
So 5th of September 2002. I wish we could actually push from Saudi territory, because that's where it sort of happened in real life. We only can push from Kuwait here. So we want to try and keep casualties at a minimum. And we'll get our navy to dominate the seas from the Persian Gulf to the Arabian Sea. I doubt they're going to have any forces down here, but you never know. And as NATO is a defensive alliance, we're probably not going to have that many support. Unless we call some countries in. Nice. So we can straight up war deck them now if we want. And I think we will. Let's have uh, Operation Freedom here today. Nice. Let's go. Let's go f try and find those um, WMDs. Okay, yeah, so we can't call anyone in. So, I think they captured the capital with only... It was, it, was, it, was only it was a matter of days. 12 or 20 or so. So if we could create a similar feat... That would be insane. Okay, so... There's only a small amount of territory here that we own from our naval base... Or our military base. We're trying to make a front line here. And once we gain more territory, we can bring in more forces. Yeah, so Turkey can't come in from the north. Looks like Israel's coming over to help as well. So we want to try and push them out of Basra as quickly as possible. The Germans are giving us some help. They're dropping in supplies. And it looks like... The Iraqis are moving up with some Soviet tanks. Our new modernized US tanks could should make quick work of them. Australia wants sent to send some volunteers, which is nice. Our resources aren't in the best. Canada wants to help out as well. Yeah. I was just curious to see the government type. So most of it is still Western Outlook, which is fine. All right. We have air supremacy over the top. Let's uh, speed things up, I suppose. Nice, we're making some progression here. There we go. We've taken another tile. Excellent. Well, how about we get you guys to full-on swing north, I think. The more tiles we can get, the better. Then we can justify more reinforcements. We've got the rest of the... US Army... Waiting to come on over from Qatar. Dude, we are absolutely carving up the center of the country. Nice. If we can divide and conquer them, the quicker the better. Alright, let's make some more front lines here. Let's get the secondary 18 units to go here. We're just an inferior force. Sorry, we're facing an inferior force. We are the superior force. I think that's what's going on. And let's give out a couple of these minor groups as well to spearhead through here. Nice. But air supremacy is make or break in the modern day mod. You seriously need it. And getting as much ground support capacity as you can. Yeah, so there's been 14k killed. Oh my god. Well, we've only lost 100, which is absolutely nothing. Nice. It, the lower we can keep that, the more we can keep the public on side. Oh, dude, we've got a massive encirclement down in the south here. Nice. Dude, we're having an easier time here than we did in um, Afghanistan. Our fuel's running out, though. Mostly because we've got our navy operating. Nice! So, they have capitulated now. So, we've got a decision to make. Do we pop it? Do we occupy? I think we take the territory. 
Like, we just full-on annex it, because, look, in Hearts of Iron 4, we want to try and get, and especially how the, the economy's worked up in this, we want the civilian factories, we want the military, and we also want the resources as well to sell on the market to therefore get more money. So, for all intensive purposes, you could role-play it like, oh, we're putting in a small minor government, but we really control this territory. Because we're going to want to... Look, set up an American empire. We want to try and take as much territory in and around the east as we can. But Al Gore's <laughs> plan and preparation for Operation Freedom. And his uh, war has uh, come to flourishing. Fl flourishing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and we've carved out a new chunk of states. For the United States. Hell yeah. Is there anything else we can do now? Um, we can send some training missions, which is probably not a bad idea once we've got spare political power. But no, I think we're, we're good here at the moment. We might make plans to push eastward and westward, but we'll see how we go. But we took them out in quite quick succession. Got these guys to the north as well. I don't think we're probably going to go to war with them. They're our valuable allies. Alright, we need to repair the infrastructure in the country before we focus on building more offices in the US. Yeah, so we've got no... nothing we can do over here. Yeah, I can kind of see why some people's criticism of this mod is that the um, the national focuses are a little bit short. Dude, we're making 30 billion now. Nice. We're slowly but surely paying off our debts. Um, I suppose we support them. There's a fair few lines I want to go down. I want to expand NATO. I probably want to try and get our influence in Asia going as well. If we can reassure the Japanese, that'd be great. Nice. So we can probably get some better quality infantry equipment. The economy is currently booming under Al Gore. And we've reduced the debt by 300 billion, which is quite a bit. We're dropping down the corruption as well. Which will make us more money. And we're currently globalized trade economy as well. It's probably not a bad idea to go into this as well. Sweden wants to leave the uh, EU. Um, okay. We want to eventually get them into NATO. We've currently got the house support, but we don't have the senatorial. Uh, we probably can go down... Uh, I wanted to go down balanced approach. Eventually, because we went down the big two before. Yep, so that's where I want to go down. I don't really care who's in power, whatever. There's both positives and negatives for either side. The Democrats are now ahead. The Populist Party is now the third largest. Alright, coming currently going with Democratic Ideals. And there's an election coming up next year as well. We eventually want to strengthen the Federal Reserve. But uh, things are doing pretty good here today. We're slowly but surely building up the uh, American Empire. Alright, we're going to try and grant statehood to Puerto Rico and Guam. We've been saving up to do that, because that would really help. We have 100% of the House support, and we've got 60% of the Senate as well. So our goal is pretty popular at the moment. Alright, we're going to strengthen the Federal Reserve now. Oh, shit. Oh, we're going to be at war, eh? 
Wait, what? I can't believe he's attacked them. Hang on. Oh, no, they brought in CSTO. Shit. Because, they, yeah, their independence is guaranteed by them. Oh, no, they joined the Axis of Resistance. And now their forces are on alert. <laughs> oh, we're not guaranteeing their independence. Oh, fuck. As if we're not. Oh, that's bullshit. Oh, no. We're going to lose one of our major allies in the East here because we can't help them. Because I don't want to go to war with CSTO because we eventually want to phase out the Axis of Resistance. Shit. There's no focus tree over here. No, because then we abandon NATO and then we do our own alliance with them. Ah, oh, fuck, that's huge. Oh no, they're probably going to be crushed, actually. Well, what can we do? We can send some... Volunteers. But we only can send one. Oh, dude, they're going to overthrow the... The pro-Westerners. Shit. Well, I guess we just try and send them... As much shit as we can. We've got 30k in stockpile. So let's send 75 a month. Let's equip them with... Well... Better quality equipment. Uh, what what are we like? Is there any vehicles that we we've got a bunch of? We haven't got too many javelins. We give them some arty. Oh, we've actually got a bunch of. Oh wow, well, we'll just give them that then. We've got a bunch of equipment we've somehow managed to yoink from our previous conquests. <laughs> oh hell, we've got a bunch of them. Holy shit. Right, let's just try and send that to them. Oh, damn. Well, maybe we need to go around there and guarantee a bunch of countries to secure their independence because, yeah, it's not realistic that the US wouldn't get involved if these guys got attacked. Like, for example, although Australia isn't in... NATO, we are, our independence is guaranteed by the US, through various packs now. Ah, oh, shit. They're probably going to overthrow them and put in a um, pro-emerging outlook government. Shit. Oh, they are receiving a ridiculous amount of military aid, though. Alright, wait for our reinforcements to get here. But things are really kicking off here in the east. Alright, we're here. We've got some special forces. Oh my god, they're really... swinging south. To be... To be fair, we've kind of disrupted the balance of power here. <laughs> like, we managed to take out a country. I guess from their perspective, they're like, yeah, well, why can't we do the same? Not have EU backing. <laughs> a UN backing, rather. Oh, shit. Well, they're currently holding for now. But it's not looking good. Alright, we got some fighting here. Bloody hell. At least the Federal Reserve is um, secure. Well, well, we'll just try and sit here and try and hold them off as best we can. If we can hold them for six months, we uh, might be able to sue for peace. But unfortunately, guys, I've got to wrap things up here today. I've been playing for about an hour or so.
well, this video will be about an hour or so. I've probably been playing for a couple... No, yeah, well more than that. Once this gets uh, edited down, because it takes... I think it takes, like, 15 minutes a year in this game or something crazy. So, it will take us quite a while to uh, wrap up this series. But... Yeah, I think we'll just go around try and destroy all the factions and we'll we'll just try and conquer any potential threats, I think. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Unfortunately, I got to wrap up the uh, video here. We left it on a bit of a click cliffhanger. We're going to try and defend them at the start of the next episode. So thank you very much for watching the first episode of My Hearts of Iron 4. Millennium Dawn modded campaign as the United States. So if you haven't already left the video a like, subscribe if you're new, I'd really much appreciate it. Check out my social media links as well, linked in the description below. And of course, let me know feedback and suggestions as well. This is my first time playing on the brand new update, and I haven't played Modern Day for quite a while. But I've thoroughly enjoyed this first part. I can definitely see myself maybe playing as other potential factions. I think we might try and go some of, some down some of the sort of NATO members first. I think that'd be kind of fun. Also, got to say a huge and massive thank you to this month's YouTube channel members. So, massive thank you to Chuckles the Hut, Itchy Green Narrow One, Divine Overhand, Hector A, and Dimitri H. Really appreciate those guys. All right, got to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ben Simsey. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.